Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to my channel. My name is Albert, and as you can tell from the title, I had lost $11,000 last week on a single trade. And um, I figured it'd be interesting or fun to make a video about what happened and why it happened and how I'm feeling and how I was feeling. Um, so for the month of May, you can see I'm currently down about $10,000 because I made a little bit of money the week before. Um, so yeah, this is definitely the most money I've lost so far. So far, it uh, definitely can be more. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So here's a quick, s let's, let's call it a table of contents. I don't know how I have every point on here, but uh, let's, let's say a, a, a table of contents to my deep self-analysis on how I lost $10,781 uh, in a very short period of time. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick summary about kind of myself and what I'm doing and maybe some points that are kind of relevant. I'll talk a little bit about my thoughts and I'll give you some basic understanding of like what I, what kind of trades I'm doing in case you don't know. Um, I'll talk about my plans that happened that my plans before and also right before before the loss and then also right before the loss, uh, how I lost the money exactly, why I took a loss instead of rolling it, and then you know obviously my feelings and, and plans moving forward. So um, yeah, so quick summary about me. I think these are just relevant pieces of information that I want to I would like to share. Um, I, t I tend to have an urge to tell people about stuff that happens to me um, and hope this YouTube channel is a good outlet for that. So, you know, thanks for watching, uh, you know, whether it's good or bad news. Um, although this, I try not to share with people because I was gonna make a video of it anyways. Um, and then um, I think I'm the kind of person that tends to regret the past more than worry about the future, um, which I think is relevant to this because you know, this is something that I'll, I, I'll end up regretting, but I don't think I'm going to regret it. I, I'm actually kind of over it already at the last point. I'm actually kind of over, over already. Um, but there was a point in time where I was like, you know, on Thursday, I was like, yo, I was not feeling great about it. Uh, I have a very high risk tolerance, I think, compared to the average, average person. And then I have, I, I'm, I'm more of a long-term holder, so I'm holding a lot of shares. And I've just been trading puts, puts for income, okay? So there's like, trading the puts is not really my, my long-term plan to get rich, right? This is just kind of a, hopefully I can make some money. My goal is to make, you know, 150K this year doing that. Obviously, that's not going to happen or it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. But anyways, that's kind of a quick summary on me. And um, before I get started, uh, I just want to point out a few things. You know, it's just money. So I've had a few days to process uh, process this and get over it. Um, I would like to point out, you know, I'm saying it's just money. It's, I'm, I'm not saying that $11,000 isn't a lot of money to me. It is It is a lot of money to me, right? But, but um, the amount is all relative, right? So if you're losing money... It's, is it a lot? Is not a lot? It's all relative, right? Um, so it's not really about the amount of money you're losing. It's kind of more about you know how you're pro how you're handling it after you lose it, right? Because I think right now a lot of people are going through uh, a lot of losses, right? So I'm trying I'm trying also to make this video just you know in case you're losing a lot of money, like a few things to think about, right? Um, and when I say money is just money. I'm not pretending like I don't like money. I like money a lot. I have a channel about making money, right? Uh, I typically save a lot of money. I like money more than I like most things. Uh, but that being said, the way I look at money is just it's just a, it's just a way for me to. It's my ultimate goal. If if I were to like really break it down, is like, hey, I just want to live a life where I don't have to do anything I don't want to do, right? And money is a tool to get me there, right? So losing this money will it help me, or or will will it you know affect that either way? In the grand scheme of things, not really. Um, and you know, I think at these times where if you're losing a lot of money, you got to kind of think about what you have. Right. And I'm very lucky. Like one of the things that I noticed recently, I was actually, this is kind of random, but I was reading this subreddit last week. Uh, it's called, uh, am I the asshole? And I was reading that for like, I don't know, a good hour. And I just realized like, Hey, a lot of people have these problems that these social problems or these, these weird problems that like, I don't even think about. I'm like, man, I'm so lucky to not have any of these problems, um, right? So even if I'm losing money, it's like, hey, a lot of other parts of your life are, are actually doing really well. So yeah, just be happy with what you have. And hey, at least I got to make a video out of it, right? So that's kind of how I feel about it right now. Um, other things that I, I noticed, like, as you probably know, the market has been falling pretty substantially over the last couple of weeks. So, you know, I've been losing a lot more than $11,000. Uh, like, you know, there's, there's many days where it's like a, you know, a, I don't want to say the amount, but let's just say like a, like a 8%, 12% loss, right? Uh, you know, daily, like m many days out of the last two or three weeks. Um, so it's a substantial amount of money. 
Uh, and I didn't even, I don't even feel, like, that doesn't even really affect me, right? Because, uh, you know, I know that it's going to come back, right? I think this affected me a lot more because this is actual, this is a trade that actually started and I closed. So I actually, this money is actually gone. Um, and then I think another aspect of it is like, especially from a direct action I had just done, it, it caused a lot more regret. And I'll get in more detail later, but I, there was one day where I lost like, you know, let's, let's call it 10%. And then I also lost like a hundred dollars playing poker that same day. And then that, that, that hundred dollars I lost playing poker was like so much more, I don't know. I felt so much worse about it for some reason, even though that was not at all a lot of money compared to what I lost, if that makes any sense. Um, but yeah, I think the direct action is where I'm getting, feeling that regret. And then also the actual paper, the actual loss is where I'm feeling that regret. So, uh, kind of another thing on this, the fundamentals, like I think a, a reason that I'm not super worried about losing money or like taking a, like, you know, however much Tesla drops since it's all time high is because I have a very strong conviction in the fundamentals. Right. And right now when everything's falling and all these stocks are falling, I'm not really worried because I all, like, I'll have all my money in one stock. I know a lot about it. Versus like I had all this money in all these other stocks I used to own, and they're falling a lot. Like I'd be freaking out right now if, if those stocks fell. If that makes any sense. Okay, that's kind of more to my point of hey, like there are upsides to not diversifying. Um, okay, so just real quick definition of things in, in case you're following along. I'm about to explain what, how I lost this money, but just just in case you don't know what this is, like I've been selling puts, and what is selling a put mean? It means that I'm promising to buy 100 shares of in this case Tesla at agreed upon price, right? So for example, let's say today the price is at $900. I say, hey, next week I promise to buy 100 shares of Tesla for $800 each for a agreed upon price, right? The odds of 900, if it's 900 right now, the odds of it going down to 800 is is like pretty low. So I'll get paid a premium and that premium will be smaller, big, depending on the chance of that happening, right? So in this case, I got paid, I got paid like 1200 bucks for that, for that promise, right? Um, so the guy that I sold that put to, he can pretty much make, he can pay, pretty much force me to uh, buy those shares at any time. Usually he would force you when the price, the stock price is below what you what you bought it at, right? So for example, the stock price is now 700, he'll force you to buy it at 800 because he'll make that $100 difference, right? In turn, I can also buy that promise back. So I can actually go in on the market, I can buy that promise from someone else or from the same person, probably someone else. And basically I instead pay a premium to someone else and now they're on the hook for that, okay? So that's how the fundamentals of selling a put and what that looks like. Uh, how does margin work? Uh, so margin is pretty much a loan. Um, so let's say for example, I had promised to buy 100 shares of Tesla at 800, right? So I would technically need $80,000 in order to uh, have this promise, right? So you can do a cash secure put, which means that $80,000 is in your account, you can't do it. Or you can do it on margin, which means like some amount of the $800 is required to hold there in case you can't do it. Sometimes you can use your actual shares as margin as well. Uh, but just know the amount of money you need to hold will go up or down based on how close you are to that actual strike price or the promise you, the price you promised that, right? So for example, the stock price was at $2,000, then you'll need very, a very small amount of money. If the stock price is at $100, you'll need a very large amount of money, okay? Um, so what did I do? Uh, yeah, so exactly like that example, the price was at $900, I sold a, or it was at 865, I sold an $800 weekly put, right? So I promised to buy 800 shares, 100 shares of Tesla 800 last week, last Friday. I had thought about it. Um, I did have the, the $80,000 in cash, but I had thought about it and I not only took on risk because what's happening in my account is I have multiple puts out. So as those puts, as price just drops lower and lower, and also the margin I have in my account, which is the shares go lower and lower, the requirement gets higher and higher. So what happens is they may take some of that $80,000 and they'll put that money into, you know, um, margin, right? So you can't use it, right? You can't use it. So, uh, I, I, had, I knew all this, right? But I was just like, Hey, you know what? Um, I'm going to sell another put. What my plan was, or a plan that I had, or I, I've, I've talked about, was like, hey, you know what? If market's tanking, I'm, you know, I might just hold on to this cash and just wait until the stock price dips to a certain price and just buy the shares. And that was the original plan. And then I had sold the put at 800, I made money, and I was, oh, let's try to do it again, right? Um, the other thing with puts is like, it's a, it's a very high chance of you making a little bit of money, but it's also a low chance of you losing a lot of money. So there, there's that, that kind of risk. And it's it's kind of like what they say is like picking up pennies in front of a steamroller. Um, yeah, so I had the cash to cover margin. I knew this was a possibility. Um, and, and as the stock price was dropping down, I had another plan was I was like, all right, I've already fucked up. So I just put, this puts like in the money. What I'm going to, what I might, what I might do instead of rolling it, which is 
selling another put, I might just actually close my put out and just buy shares. Because I'm not gonna buy, I'm not gonna be able to buy a hundred shares. Because that eighty thousand dollars I have, maybe forty thousand of that went to go hold to secure the other puts, right? So I was a little bit worried. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit worried about getting margin called at a certain point. And what happened? What what's the worst part of getting margin called is that you have to basically close it at the bottom. All right, so that's a good summary of kind of what's going on at this point. So Wednesday night. Uh, Tesla stock price falls to um, $730, right? At this point, I'm I'm not really worried. I have two more days. I'm kind of fine, right? I'm like, all right, this, this is what I'm gonna do. I have two more days, right? I was thinking, all right, if I if I close, I was thinking like, hey, you know what? I might just close this put out and just take a loss, maybe at like 700, right? And then and then I'm just gonna buy shares, right? And then I'll write it back up. So that will that will basically uh, stop me from having to getting forced to close at the bottom uh, and I, I, I probably wouldn't have gotten called until like 650 or something I, I don't know the exact math but i wasn't close to getting called at this point uh and other and kind of like a random random news i basically am going to a wedding on thursday morning my wife is out of town so i set a alarm for 6 35 in the morning right um and what happened was i woke up 6 35 i'm like all right I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go i'm gonna go to the airport and i was like oh shoot i should check on tesla real quick so i check on it the price had dropped to 700, and then I refresh. It hits six. It hits 680, right? So like basically at 700, my put's worth ten thousand dollars if I want to buy it back, and at 680, it's worth like twelve thousand dollars if I want to buy it back, right? So then at that point, I see it. I'm literally awake for like maybe four, a minute, and then I'm just like, fuck it. What happens if it drops to 620 or 600? Then I'll be. Then at that point, I'll be forced to buy it back, and I'll also lose instead of losing. Twelve thousand dollars, I'll lose fifteen or sixteen thousand dollars. So I was like, I already I accepted the loss, you know, within a second. I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna close it. I'm gonna be responsible. So I just literally just do a market order, and then and then then I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna buy it back, and then I'm gonna start using the other cash I have to buy some shares. So I was like, I was, I'll sell it. I'll buy the price stock price at six eighty. I won't be able to buy a hundred shares. I'll be able to buy like you know, a, 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 still a significant amount of shares. So, um, so basically. I, I do that, I close it, and then I refresh. I, I get I got I got filled at six eight at six eighty, and I refresh. It's already back to seven hundred, and I refresh again. It's already back to seven twenty. So at that point, I didn't even have time to buy the shares. And then by the time it was on Friday morning, it went back to seven eighty five. So literally within that f maybe four minute window, it was like a five k swing that I just missed out on. So instead of losing, let's say if I, I closed at seven thirty, I would have lost five or six thousand dollars. I lost eleven thousand dollars, right? So. That's why I was super regretful because if I set my alarm at 6:40, I would have just missed this dip. And I literally, I didn't even check like I didn't even check the line. I didn't even check anything. I just checked the certain current, certain price and I checked it again. So, so yeah, I just I really really reacted on whim. I was awake for maybe one minute, and my wife wasn't there, so I wasn't able to ask her how she felt about it or anything like that. And I just like I just fucking just did it. I just acted, and then right after I acted, I was immediately I, I caught the bottom, and the, it was literally only there for maybe like a minute. Maybe a minute and a half. So I, I literally caught the bottom, and and that's why I was like super regretful because I just like if I had just done nothing, like that would have been a 10k swing by Friday, and I probably would have held I probably would have held onto it through Friday because I'm back I'm back up right. Um, I still would have lost maybe if at 75 I would have lost like 300 bucks or whatever. Assume I caught it at the at the top, but um, but yeah. So I basically lost 11k over. Uh, a really, really not well thought out reaction, um, and and yeah, later I found out like you shouldn't even be you shouldn't even be making trades so early in the day because it's super volatile. So usually what happens I usually don't I usually don't wake up this early early to check the price. So it was just like a a storm of perfect. It was just a storm of perfect events that happened. Like I wasn't here. To start, I'm usually not up this early. Usually I would you know bounce ideas off my wife. Usually I would, you know, be on the computer to do it. Um, you know, usually there's a lot of usuallys, right? And I literally caught the the I think the, the worst thing is you caught the absolute bottom. You caught the absolute bottom, and it was only at the bottom for like not even 90 seconds. So, so yeah, that's what happened, and that's why I lost that that money. So, um, but okay, so thinking back on it, like, why did I why did I take a loss? Be, it's because I don't know what would happen. Like, what if it dropped to 600? Then I would have taken a loss at 600, right? So I was just, I was just calling it quits. 
and I just happened to bounce back up. So, and I didn't even get the, I didn't get to buy the shares. So I was planning, hey, I'm a I'm gonna I'm close out of here, buy the shares. So I didn't even buy any shares because by the time I got back up to, you know, 620, I put an order for 700, and that that didn't fill. And then and then next I put an order for 750, and that didn't fill either. And now it's above that. So, so yeah. Um, but I'm I'm probably gonna buy more shares at like you know whatever the price is tomorrow, just because you know fuck it, whatever. I I, I mean like honestly, Tesla's like super cheap right now. So, um, so yeah. So. Once again, fundamentals in a bear market, I covered this already, but I think conviction is super important because you don't panic sell like I did. Although I only panic sell, not because of the conviction, not because of conviction in Tesla, but it's more because I I took on too much risk. Um, I didn't take any over leverage, but the leverage did cost me to make a decision that I didn't want to make, which guess I, I guess that means I over leveraged, right? Um, so technically, I the idea is like I. I should just hold held all the way through, get a sign at 800, and just hold that, and then sell the sell the shares later. But I wasn't able to do that because my other puts required cash um, that I would have used to buy those shares. So yeah, that's what happened. Um, okay, so what I learned from this, um, yeah, it was a pure overreaction, right? It was a pure pure overreaction. I literally overreacted. I had like a minute. I was still sleeping. I just had a minute to wake up. And one of the things that Bugs me if I had to set my alarm for like 7:40, I would just miss the entire thing, right? Um, I had a plan that I didn't stick to. I probably should write my plans down somewhere, right? My plan was, hey, go, hey, buy the shares, right? In the last minute, I like, decided to sell put, which that, that happened, and then, then my plan was like, okay, like if this happens, like you know, close it out and then buy shares. Yeah, I just basically didn't do anything. I I, I did. I put myself in a difficult situ situation, right? And I shouldn't do shit on my phone because that I I honestly just did market value because I was I literally panicked. So I was like, I, I, I'll I'll close anything. Last thing you want to do is you want to put in an order and it doesn't fill and goes even lower. Um, so that's what happened. Yeah, you basically never want to do market order either. Um, but I was, I was in a, I thought I was panicking, right? Um, okay. And then the last thing that I, I realized as I was making this video, on Thursday I was like super. So basically, what happened was like I, she, she was out of town, so I basically, I basically closed the put out. I lost eleven thousand dollars. I'm like Ubering to the airport, and then I'm like messaging her about what happened. And then she was like super supportive about it, and I was like, I was like in so much regret, right? Imagine if you I played, I played poker, I lost hundred dollars, and I was in so much regret, and then I had made a one second trade, I lost eleven thousand dollars. Obviously, you can imagine kind of how much regret I was in. Um, but yeah, I mean, she talked, she talked through it, and she was like, oh yeah, you know, whatever, whatever, and then like, and then I, and I realized like by today, I, I was already over it. So I think a lot of that had to do with her being super supportive. So, so yeah, that that helped a lot. Um, in retrospect, so thanks for that. Um, but yeah, that's that's what happened. And um, moving forward, I think I'm gonna. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do moving forward is whatever cash I have available, I'm gonna buy shares at you know anything less than 800. And I'm just gonna chill, right? Um, yeah, I'm just gonna chill and I'm just gonna write it up, right? If I think about it, like let's say for example, if you, I think Tesla's gonna go back up to 1100 then that would be let's say if i had 100 shares that would be like a 30k that'd be a 30k gap right so i'll, I'll have to successfully sell let's say 15 puts if i average thousand dollars in that time frame so i don't know i think it might be safer and, and easier to just buy the shares when the price is low versus missing that run up again so that's my plan hope this was helpful and yeah man thanks for uh watching and uh yeah Talk to you soon. Thanks.